During the filming of this video, all firearms have been continuously checked for safety to make sure they're clear and there's no violations. All firing is done by licensed shooters and all safety precautions on the range are observed at all times. John Browning, a legend in the firearms world, developed rifles, shotguns, pistols, machine guns, and his influence is still felt today. Joining me is Stu, once again. Stu, welcome. Thank you. And today we're going to take a look at one of the firearms that he developed. Stu, what do we have today? We have here a Browning High Power. This is actually one made in Canada for the English, uh, for the Canadian Armed Forces. This one here is a Mark I Asterix and is fairly unique because it has a 500 meter tangent sight and a slot on the backdrop. And what's the slot for? The slot? This, uh, this slot and this here were actually for a Chinese contract. And the Chinese back in World War II enjoyed the C96 Mauser, which had a holster stock. So they would be able to either put a butt stock on the pistol or have the pistol transition into the holster stock for storage. And, and are those holster stocks still uh, available around the world today? And they're scarce as hen's teeth. And there's actually different styles. There's Chinese knockoffs. There's uh, North American knockoffs. And you have the original ones right here. So that is an original stock that would have been uh, shipped with the weapon over to China. Yes, this would be original. But unfortunately, because of the politics that happened, a lot of these pistols never made it to China. Only, I think, 500 ever made it back. Sorry, made it there and even few made it back. All right. So uh, what are the other features about this? Now, one of the things that is uh, uh, different with the pistol as compared to ones that you get today is this is a single action. Yes. Uh, and it is still in use today by uh, the Canadian Army, where uh, I think both of us have some experience with it. Can you just run us through the different features of it? Sure. One of the big features I'm going to do right now is, first, first of all, this firearm is clear. There's no magazine. Magazine here and the chamber is clear. One of the things you do after that, it would be to ease springs. We let the slide forward and squeeze the trigger. The trigger is not linked up to the hammer yet. It's got a magazine safety. So you have to insert the magazine, squeeze trigger, and now drop the hammer. So besides magazine safety, you have yourself the magazine release. You have yourself your safety, which again can be applied either with the slide forward or to the rear to help with uh, disassembly. Your trigger, you have yourself on your slide catch lever stud, which also helps in the aid of disassembly, and something kind of archaic as well is a little sling swivel here. Now this is a nine millimeter pistol. This is nine millimeter. It's a uh, stagger box, which That's right. holds thirteen, I believe. It would normally hold thirteen, but the Canadian laws say we can only hold ten. Ten. And my, the magazine I have here says John Inglis, and also it's got a little pop rivet so that I can't pull the uh, plate out and then adjust with the uh, limiter inside. Excellent. So, so shall we uh, see how she shoots? Sure, no problem. One of the things we won't be using for the test fire are original magazines because uh, the metallurgy wasn't as good as they should have been and the magazine lips will actually splay out and won't give you reliable feeding. And we both know that is a common problem that we have today with these uh, exactly. firearms. A lot of times people don't realize magazines are considered to be the consumable part. Magazines, if you say but maybe 5,000, 10,000 rounds, you should seriously think about replacing them. Right. So, shoot off and see how this works. Now for the fun of it, we'll try it with the stock on. How do you find it with the stock? Well, it actually took a while to get used to it. I'm actually using a 12 o'clock hold to shoot, to knock the plates over. 
And do you think that's because you're adjusting where you would normally hold it? I think what happens is that the, the dynamics of how the pistol recoils in your hand has changed drastically because of the the installation of the stock. Excellent. All right, let's see what this thing can do. Remember, 12 o'clock hold. Oh, yeah, you can definitely feel it's lifted it up on you. Hmm. That was different. <laughs> One of the complaints we hear uh, from our uh, comrades in arms is that it, they complain about it being an inaccurate weapon. Uh, and I believe that's mostly due to the length of time it's been in service and the amount of rounds that have been down it. Uh, for a new one, if somebody was to buy one today, uh, would you consider it to be a very accurate weapon? I would. I think one, one of the biggest problems with this firearm system is the sights. Uh, the roof, the uh, front sight is more of a uh, triangle or a pyramid shape and the uh, rear sight is inverted notch and because of this it's harder to align. Most combat pistols these days are a square post and a square notch and because of the fact they use a, a V and inverted V I think it makes it a lot, whole lot harder to uh, aim and shoot with it. That's a problem. Today's modern high power has got the uh, rectangular block type sights which make it a whole lot easier to shoot. So I understand that the uh, the stock has one more feature it can do. Sure, no problem. Let me just uh, let the slide go forward. Got uh, a magazine, no rounds in it. From here, as we saw, mounted to the uh, butt stock, it also doubles as a holster. Excellent. Well, thank you very much <laughs> again for showing us uh, this firearm. It is uh, not only a uh, classic of John Browning, but it is a, uh, a firearm which has seen a lot of service with the Canadian military. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. No problem.